I hate to tell you this, but I'm not Mrs. Anderson. He's under the weather. He's not under the weather at all. And I can't sing like him, and I certainly can't play a guitar like him, and I certainly can't read poetry like him, but he is here with us in spirit, and you did get to hear him at your last community meeting. So keep Dr. Mr. Danderson in your in your thoughts because he's not feeling well at all today. With that said, I welcome you to the 39th Senior Recognition Ceremony. And I am not a good replacement for Mr. Danderson, but I'm Steve Horton. I'm the Executive Director of the school. And I'm going to begin by introducing this year's Senior Class President, Ashley Green, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by Rosie Schultz, our Student Government President, who will extend a brief welcome. So if you would please stand. members, students, and seniors. Welcome to LSMSA's Senior Recognition Ceremony. Thank you all for gathering with us, whether you've traveled from near or far to support your senior today. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, when an eagle's nest is damaged or destroyed, they will work around the clock to fix their nests. The eagle feels a sense of urgency to repair its home. Instead of following its normal routine or sleeping, eagles will work overtime until their nest is fixed. Despite every challenge, crisis, or catastrophe our nest has faced over the past few years, we have all put in the work to rebuild our sense of community. Returning to campus after the pandemic brought a whole new host of challenges, but I am so proud of how our LSMSA community continued and continues to support one another through every challenge. Eagles also bond for life. In approximately 19 hours, our seniors will walk across the stage and receive our hard-earned diplomas. After we process out of the Coliseum, we will all part ways, attending colleges and other programs across the world. But our lifelong friendships that we formed here as Eagles will persist. Tomorrow, we get to join an incredible network of LSMSA alumni across the world. The connections we have formed here will truly last a lifetime. Juniors, <coughs> you have less than 365 days until you are in our shoes. Sophomores, 730. Cherish them. They will be gone before you can even blink. And please, keep the nest in good condition while we're gone. Thank you all for the time that we've shared here together. As eagles, we shall excel. Taking the responsibility of being student body president in a time like these last three years is hard. You're leading a group of 360 plus students. You're leading a group of 100 plus faculty and staff through some of the most challenging experiences when we try to navigate relations with both groups. And so on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the Louisiana School, I want to present Rosie with her own gavel, because she served brilliantly as our student government organization president during the 2022-23 school year that I refer to often as our year that we're finally back to normal. So on behalf of the school, congratulations. Thank you. 
you know, we didn't even recognize anybody when we started the program and I went straight into the program. So let's back up a little bit and do some of those just because it's the right thing to do and there's some people who are very deserving of this. But I want to begin with let's recognize the parents of our graduates and other family members joining this weekend who are paying tribute to our 39th graduating class. So if you're a parent or a graduate of our graduates or other family members that are here to celebrate with us, please stand and accept our applause. These are such celebratory events. Tonight's ceremony and tomorrow's graduation ceremonies are being recorded for posterity. Now our stage guests, I'll introduce them during the course of the evening, but as we begin our program, I would remind you or ask kindly that all of your cell phones, mine included, be turned off and placed on vibrate so that all may enjoy the ceremony. So we're going to begin with our Excellence Awards. Seniors are selected for the Louisiana Schools Excellence Awards according to a benchmark set forth by the faculty or staff representing the particular category or discipline. Therefore, each department has established its own criteria for recognizing students in the excellence category. For their achievements, students will receive a Louisiana School Medallion and, and for each discipline for which they're recognized. So announcing the Excellence Awards tonight will be the department chairs. One of our Louisiana school traditions is for each academic department to select a graduating senior to march in front of the department and carry the gondolon, which is the flag for that department, which are all behind me during the graduation procession. Department chairs will introduce their gondolon ear at the conclusion of their excellence announcements and each gondolon ear will be welcome to the stage to accept a plaque. So the department heads consist of the following academic goliaths in order of their presentation. Dr. Al Benner, who has the honor of introducing our Creative and Performing Arts Excellence Awards. Dr. Casey Green, who will present the Excellence Awards for the Humanities. Dr. John Littlejohn, who will present the Excellence in Foreign Language Awards. And following Dr. Littlejohn will be not me introducing, <laughs> but Dr. Mr. Randy Key introducing the Math and Computer Science Excellence Awards. Dr. Maggie Hodge will introduce the Excellence Awards for all the sciences. And then Mr. Jacob Spielbauer, who heads the Health and Human Performance Department, will announce his Excellence in Health and PE Awards. And last, but certainly not least, Ms. Randy Washington, director of the Living Community, will announce the Excellence in Residential Life Awards. So seniors, when your name is announced, please stand and turn around to let your parents and other families see your bright and shiny faces. But you've got to remain standing, and that's the hard part, until everyone in your discipline has been introduced. And our audience, as challenging as it may be, we ask that you hold your applause until the names of all of the students in a particular discipline have been announced. So let us begin. First, LSMSA's incredibly amazing composer, Dr. Albert Johan Sebastian. <laughs> Baker. For Corral, Air 
Carol Schwett. Jordan Curry. Jamie, Jamie Perdue and Rosie Schultz. For Private Voice, Jamie Perdue and Rosie Schultz. For Dance, Delaney Ann Ferris, Victoria Frittle, Elise Yugen, and Abigail Galasso. For theater, Marshall Dowell and Rosie Schultz. For technical theater, Maddie Williams.
imagination, and heart into the study of the humanities. We now recognize the following students for their accomplishments in English, creative writing, and work with Polio, our student-run literary magazine, and in history. For excellence in English, we recognize the B.F. Tui Adams Huron. Macy Thorjar, William Brown, Emma Cuccini, Julian Mirabe, Hollis Pogo, Joshua Gillett, Leanna Kane, Abigail Molosa, Jordan Murray, John Peterson, and Dan Fan. Rosie Schultz and Isabella Caruso. Caruso, congratulations. For excellence in creative writing, we recognize Leanna Klein. And Cassandra Bell Peterson. <laughs> For excellence in Bolio, we recognize Leanna Kane. <laughs> and in excellence in history, we recognize the PSUV. Adam Strong, Laura Bordeaux, William Brown, Emma Cicini, Rachel Christensen, Julie English, Ashley Green, Isabel uh, Leslie, John Patterson, Rosie Schultz, and Maddie Williams. Our department has agreed that our complimentary, our standard bearer, is William Proud.
Romani Ite Domo. Or, or your German class, and you're afraid you're going to mispronounce the word Shisen, and then everybody's going to laugh at you. And point, they're going to point and laugh at you. <laughs> no, but you have to push through that for any kind of success in language. You have to push through that. And you also have to make your mouth form words that's not used to make. Make, make your mouth form sounds that it's not used to make. And you've got to learn all these new words. And also you have to change your perspective of the world. How do you see the world? How do you relate to reality? You have to make that little change from your first language. All of those are key to success of any type in languages. And these students have achieved and demonstrated excellence. Excellence in Chinese. Joy Q. Excellence in French, French level two. Anne Marie Campbell. Remember Costello? Claire Grimillon. Garlapati, 
Joshua Dillett, Caitlin Hong, Damian Leonco, <coughs> Catherine Long, Ann Fong, and Mary Claire Toy. not only give them a medallion, but a large CS emblazoned on the front of all of their t-shirts. Will the superheroes of computer science please stand? For excellence in computer science, we recognize Aiden Bourne, Carter Copsey, Adam DeLott, Bo Fontenot, Pooja Garlapati, Talon Novak, and Han Fong. Even among superheroes, there is one more super, the super superhero, the gonfalon carrier for the math and computer science department, is Aiden Bourne. Students for their excellence. 
and maximizing their abilities to perform at their highest potential. For excellence in health and physical education, we recognize L.J. Aguilar, Aaron Burton, Joshua Chessel, Adam DeLott, Eli Dijak, Jolie England, Elise Hugit, Ariana Jackson, Jordan Murray, Colin Novak, John Patterson, yeah. Rosie Schultz, and Cole Williamson. The Gonfalon year for health and physical education is Aaron Bird. Supernatural activities and maybe mass destruction. 
What, however, makes this popular perception prevalent? And does the stereotype dictate the direction of every story that involves dragons? In her Distinction Project, Sophia discussed both the history of dragons and their roles in stories throughout the ages. Her distinction also explored how the history of dragons inspired her own original story, The Dragon and the Maid. Sophia adams -Gero. Dostoevsky's Devils, Conflicting Political Ideologies in 19th Century Russia. <coughs> William Brown's distinction explored the ways in which the dichotomy between the two leading political movements in Russia, the Slavophiles and the Westernizers, was a source of contention among the Russian intelligentsia in Dostoevsky's age. Through an examination of Dostoevsky's third major novel, Devils, William asserted that the book addressed cultural controversies through representative characters and events. Brown William also noted the use of characters to illustrate the competing ideologies of mid to late 19th century Russia. And the project concluded with comments relating to current Russian politics and Dostoyevsky's observations from his own view. <coughs> William Brown. <laughs> I want to invite to the stage Ms. Emma Ciccini. Her mentor is Dr. Casey Green. In Power, Piety, and Politics, Religion's Role in the American Political System, Emma Cicchini explored the ways in which the United States of America is a secular nation, but one which has also historically struggled to separate religion from the political world. She explored the observations that cultural concerns about religion were woven into the fabric of American society dating back to the colonial period, and continue to contribute to conversations about politics and political leadership even today. Through her project, Emma discussed a wide range of observations about intersections between religion and politics, as well as the roles of geography and education on the intersections in religious and political concerns. This in-depth exploration of the dynamic also reviewed presidential elections and leadership concerns as influenced by religious culture of the 20th century. Emma Sacchini. Invite to the stage Silas Falcon. Silas's mentor is Dr. Kira Braham. <laughs> Silas's project is titled Beyond Clinical Narratives Representations of Eating Disorders in the Works of Margaret Atwood and Roxane Gay. By analyzing Margaret Atwood's novel, The Edible Woman, and Roxane Gay's memoir, Hunger, a memoir of my body, Silas's distinction discussed the contribution of gender roles in society to the development of eating disorders. Silas's project explored the implications of a fuller understanding of the genesis of some eating disorders as related to unrealistic beauty standards and patriarchal control. Unlike scientific discourse, which tends to view eating disorders as addictive behavior, this project explored the ways in which literature may represent the lives of people affected by eating disorders and allowed the readers to see a personal, emotional approach for living with an eating disorder and to better understand, to further understand the impact of specific gender roles in coping with these disorders. Silas Falcon. <laughs> Our final distinction recipient of the night is Kate Long. Her mentor is Professor Randy Key. titled The Specific Importance of Fractional Calculus, an Accessible Derivative Deep Dive. Kate's distinction presents research on the ways in which fractional calculus is a calculus of non-integer, excuse me, non-integer order integrals and derivatives. Through discussion, this project provided an in-depth introduction to fractional calculus. With the necessary <coughs> calculus context provided, the project goes on to consider the history of and definition of fractional differ integrals 
as well as the physical and graphical applications of fractional calculus. Kate's presentation concluded with a demonstration of factoring multivariable partial differential equations using fractional derivatives. Kate Moore. Ms. Angela Kubion, Registrar and Chief Articulation Officer, will now introduce those students receiving the Associate Degree through Northwestern State University. Mrs. Kubion. Long before the members of LSMSA's first graduating class arrived on campus in the fall of 1983, our school had already benefited from a strong partnership with Northwestern State University, and that relationship has only continued to grow over the last 40 years. Since 2015, our students have enjoyed the opportunity to complete an Associate of General Studies degree alongside their LSMSA degree, with more than 115 LSMSA students taking advantage of this opportunity over the last nine years. This evening, we recognize 37 seniors who, pending final transcript review, appear to have completed the requirements not only for our degree, but also the associate degree at NSU. Their AGS degrees will be conferred in August, and they stand ready to begin college in the fall with the attending credit of that accomplishment. These seniors are identified in your programs, and I invite them to stand and turn around so that we can gra and congratulate them. Forester, botanist, and illustrator, 
who was chiefly responsible for the establishment of Kisatchi National Forest in central Louisiana. She was, in addition, an effective advocate for Louisiana's Native American tribes, as well as a skilled writer and educator. In keeping with Dorman's broad intellectual legacy, Carolyn Dorman scholars are students who have excelled, who have excelled in courses such as ecology, zoology, botany, and animal behavior, and who have demonstrated a sensitivity to the arts and humanities through their personal interests and formal coursework. This year's recipient is Hunter Chasson. Good luck to those of you who will be 
enjoying my work service next year. You have some pretty big shoes to fill. I will truly miss seeing her smiling face every afternoon when she showed up in my office saying, I'm here for work service. It is with great pleasure and honor that I present to you the first recipient of the Marvin Lockhart Work Service Award, Miss Ashley Green. <laughs> He is a hard worker with a great attitude and a cheerful soul. 
I am grateful that he has been part of the LSMSA family, and I am pleased to celebrate with you our 2023 Marvin Lockhart Work Service Award recipient, Mateo Esteban. <laughs>
and a spirit of service. All traits that tomorrow's leaders will need. <coughs> this year's recipient came to LSMSA with an enthusiasm to develop, grow, and learn in and outside the classroom. He has developed into an impactful and influential leader on our campus, and through his actions and character has inspired peers, teachers, and other members of the community. With his passion, his com competitiveness, and his excellence in multiple sports. <coughs> it's not just his skill or his charisma that propels him to excellence. It's hard work and follow through, his willingness to be a great teammate to others, and his desire to inspire those around him. You could often find this student in the gym during his free time, competing in the game of pickleball, or practicing endlessly his skills in volleyball, while inspiring others to improve as well. As Ralph Waldo Emerson stated, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. This student is a stellar example for our upcoming class members that they too can have a positive impact through their unique enthusiasm and meaningful contributions to the LSMSA community. Joshua Chessel, congratulations. <laughs>
understands what it means to excel in whatever their hands find to do. They took a probability and statistics class in the sophomore year, which is something rare among sophomores. They went on to take advanced mathematics courses like advanced statistics, the mathematics of finance, and modern algebra, and came through all of them with flying colors. What's amazing is this student's ability to understand higher mathematics quickly. His ability to grapple with complex mathematical and computational ideas is outstanding. Having taken several mathematics courses over his stay at the Louisiana school, it goes without mincing words that this student is a delight and privilege to have in any mathematics classroom, and that says a lot. They show up early, roll up their sleeves, and are ready to learn. They're a teacher's dream student. But what about the work service attitude? This student carries out their work service task with a rare maturity from a 17-year-old, getting more done in less time. They learn LaTeX, a software for typing elegant mathematical documents in one week and became almost an expert in a short period of time. How does a high schooler find time to maintain a near perfect grade point average, take high level mathematics classes, lead a club, participate in sports, and still have time to hang out with friends and faculty alike? This is a testament to this student's time management skills. So without a doubt, Robbie Baker belongs to this American figure skater Peggy Fleming once said, the ultimate goal should be doing your best and enjoying it. And this student exemplifies this attitude and has been noted by numerous Louisiana school faculty and staff for their smile, positive attitude, and work ethic. They have been described as one of those students who brings a smile to everyone they encounter throughout the day, always striving to be the best they can be, and a stellar student and a fantastic member of our campus community. This student has excelled at academics, taking classes this year like Calculus II, Physics with Calculus, Molecular and Cellular Biology, and the American Civil War. They've been a member of the Volleyball Team and the Athletics Council. They're a member of the Hall Council in the LLC. And they're one of the students who absolutely, day in and day out, makes this place a better place. They always do their best, and they enjoy it. And we're proud to recognize our third recipient, Jolie Ingram. In our digitally distracted age, the quality of being simply and fully present and in the moment at times excludes us all, eludes us all. But we can take heart from the sterling example of one senior in particular, someone who has earned over the course of six semesters at the Louisiana School a reputation for being one of the most alert and engaged students to pass through our halls in this entire decade. This eagle is memorable for the sheer breadth of their achievements. In the classroom, they use intelligence and nuanced mind to not only produce terrific essays, but to articulate spoken opinions that enlighten not only the classmates, but often their instructors as well. And when it comes to vocal performances in the recital hall, well, let's just acknowledge that this skilled singer possesses a dazzling set of pipes on top of everything else. Even among a collection of overachievers, this is no ordinary individual. Here is a young student driven to succeed, not for the sake of their GPA or the opinions of college admissions officers, but for the sake of a job well done, and yet so steadfastly decent that all who know them can feel nothing but an admiring admiration 
and an enduring fondness. This scholar performer understood the challenges of the Louisiana school when they signed on to the first Zoom class in the muggy late summer of 2020. And they've done nothing but clear every hurdle, some of which they set up themselves. For this student's passion for excellence knows no limits. And if anyone indeed understands that anything worth accomplishing is difficult to achieve and should be, it's Jordan Murray. <laughs> and can change the whole course of a classroom conversation or a club meeting. This student was an elected member of the student government and was a critical part of the successful year for them. It's been a long road back to normalcy for many of the traditions and habits that almost got lost or forgotten during the pandemic. This year's student government leaders were determined to create new traditions and to ensure that all of their peers' concerns were heard. This student was a big part of that accessibility and a joyful attitude they had. They never stopped thinking of ways to improve the student experience at the Louisiana school. Even heading into the last month of school, when everyone had it, she stayed upbeat and positive. She championed a mentoring program idea that would pair incoming students with willing veterans who can help newbies figure out how to handle this place. The newly elected rising seniors of student government are already running with the idea and have met with enrollment services personnel so that it can spring into action as soon as school begins next year. And this student kept supporting and speaking for that idea, and now it will indeed happen. This student arrived at Louisiana school having already studied Spanish for a long time. So they studied French instead. They're already planning to study Spanish again in college. Got lots of family members who are French and many who are Spanish. As this student says, they want to be able to converse directly with everyone in their family and not rely on older relatives as translators. They don't expect necessarily to need these language skills in their career because this person wants to be an anthropologist, but though perhaps <laughs> they will. Their language interests spring directly from their great love for their family. Their family and friends will surely not be surprised at all if this student landed on the wall. Congratulations to Emma Cicini. One more round to our Hall of Fame. You'll never turn to your seats. Thank you. Proceeding the matriculation class of 2023 would be Leah Lentz, our college counselor and AP coordinator. Ms. Lentz. Congratulations, you made it. And to all of our families, thank you so much for letting us have this time with your children, all your students. They're absolutely wonderful. All right, so here we go. We'll ask the first group to prepare to come on stage.
Samantha Abby Ratchet, University of Houston. Then, Aukri, Louisiana State University, Alvin Honors College. <laughs> Sophia Adams, Garon, Rice University. <laughs> LJ Aguilar, Louisiana Tech University. Juliana Aleman, University of Louisiana at Lafayette. <laughs> Ravi Baker, Louisiana State University, Auckland Honors College. <laughs> Sarah Bakidono, Centenary College of Louisiana. Benuvitas, University of Louisiana, Lafayette. Macy Bergeron, Loyola University, <coughs> New Orleans. Erin <laughs> Thorne, Louisiana State University. Sierra <laughs> Boudreau, Southeastern Louisiana University. <laughs> Todd Bowman, the Catholic University of America. <laughs> Centenary College of Louisiana. <laughs> Olivia Brown, University of Louisiana at Lafayette. <laughs> William Brown, the University of Texas at Austin. <laughs> and Aaron Burton, Nichols State University. Anna Marie Campbell, Louisiana Christian University. <laughs> Delon, Baylor University. <laughs> Miles Dimitar, Loyola University, New Orleans. <laughs> Miles, you can't say that again because I just love you so much, so I don't want to get it wrong. Miles Dimitar. <laughs> Hey, you messed me up. Demetea, you got it right. Yeah. Miles Demetea. <laughs> I like Miles, I tried. Joy Dawn, the East State University. Maggie Duane, Loyola University of New Orleans. Georgia Tech, Georgia Institution. <laughs> Eli Dijak, Louisiana Scholars College at Northwestern State. <laughs> Salim El Kanofi, Louisiana State University. <laughs> Centenary College of Louisiana. <laughs> Honors College. So let's look at the Honors College off. It wasn't this one, but he is. And he wants you to know it. Because he worked hard. We love Optic. Go swing. Hard wrote your hand. I made notes for the program. They weren't printed, and I got them out. 
Matejo, East McDonald, Louisiana Honors College, Northwestern State University. <laughs> College, Northwestern State University. Aiden <laughs> Bees, Louisiana Tech University. <laughs> Delaney Ferris, Louisiana Tech University. <laughs> Louisiana State University, Ogden Honors College. Victoria Friddle, Sydney Arizona. <laughs> Pooja Garlapati, Louisiana State University, Ogden Honors College. <laughs> Lee Gotro, University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Marshall Gall, Northwestern State University of Louisiana. <laughs> Joshua Gillis, Harvard University. <laughs> they listed you, Garrett, at Bentley. Florida State University. Claire Grimion, University of Louisiana, Lafayette. Lacey Gouladieu, Louisiana Scholars College of Northwestern State University. Caitlin Hall, Brown University. Arts Institute of Louisiana. Gabriela Juarez, Louisiana <laughs> State University, Ogden Honors College. Centenary <laughs> College of Louisiana. <laughs> Daniel Cannon, Franklin Olin College of Engineering. <laughs> Cameron Keys, Louisiana State University, Ogden Honors College. Abin Kumar, Syracuse University. <laughs> Hunter Lagrange, University of Louisiana. I butchered it, didn't I, Hunter? I tried so hard to say it. Oh, I thought. I seen the spelling made it too hard. Hunter, it did. Hunter Lagrange, University of Mississippi. <laughs> Jasper Lamont, Academy of Interactive Entertainment. <laughs> Anna Landry, Louisiana State University, Austin Honors College. <laughs> Emerson Ledoux, Louisiana State University. <laughs> Ari Lee, Oglethorpe University. <laughs> Tulane 
University of Louisiana. <laughs> Damian Liam Keo, Tulane University of Louisiana. <laughs>
today at Swansea, Louisiana Tech University. I, I, I can say this, and I know this, but I made my phonetics so confusing that it's like, I, I got a little choked up, give me a second. I know, I know, I know, but I, I left off the cheese now. Isabella Tarasova, the University of Montana. <laughs>
staff and family to the biggest night of the LCSA year. Tomorrow, we will receive our diplomas, the proof that we have made it through our time here. But tonight is a special night. Tonight, the LCSA community, that is, all the students, all the faculty, and all the staff, come together to celebrate the numerous and impressive achievements of the graduating class. I am deeply honored to be standing before you all today. As I gaze upon this sea of familiar faces, I am filled with a bittersweet sense. On the one hand, I am overjoyed to be graduating with my class, but on the other, I am sad to be leaving my home away from home. I do have a confession to make, however. In true Ellsman Say fashion, I waited until the last possible minute to write this speech. 12.21 a.m. the night before it was due. <laughs> but as I sat at my desk, I found myself staring at the blank screen, the tiny blinking cursor, a constant reminder of our fast approaching graduation. But then, a glimmer of light caught my eye. My acorn, the one I had received at my senior banquet. It dawned on me that the small, golden acorn, a symbol of our journey as third year seniors, represents so much more than just that. It embodies the spirit of growth and transformation that we have all undergone during our time here. Much like acorns, we too were dropped onto this unfamiliar ground as strangers to this curious place. Once on the ground, an acorn enters a period of dormancy where it waits for the perfect conditions to germinate. For many of us, that was our sophomore year as we endured Zoom classes and waited for the time when we could finally see each other face to face. As the soil warms in the spring, the acorn swells and the embryonic root emerges, anchoring the young oak tree as it begins to develop its roots. During our junior year, we too found our grove in the brand new LLC. Here, we established a firm foundation, sharing the fertile ground of the Elsmith Sing with other young folks. Over time, our roots extended, growing larger and more intricate, entwining with those of other oaks like ourselves. Oaks with whom we share our laughter, our worries, and our sorrows. At times, our roots were not so strong, but our fellow oaks have always been there to us. <coughs> They've brought us sweet treats from the geese, have stayed up all night having to study for exams, have hosted spontaneous dance parties, and have provided trusted shoulders to cry. <coughs> our teachers have been careful arborists, supplying us with the nutrients and water we need to grow intellectually. Their guidance and instruction have quenched our thirst for knowledge and equipped us with the tools necessary to make a difference with our education. Our administration and residential life staff have provided us with the shade and protection we need to become healthy, fully grown folks. They've offered us an abundance of resources and opportunities to develop our unique branches and leaf patterns. And when needed, they've always been there to prune away some of our rougher edges. <laughs> Certainly, we have faced our fair share of challenges over the past couple of years. A pandemic, hurricanes, and losses within our community. But through it all, we have rem remained united. As we prepare to leave our beloved Ellis Massey Grove and embark on the next daunting chapter of our lives, let us take a moment to reflect on the growth and transformation we've undergone during our time here. Let us cherish the memories we've made and the connect connections we've formed. Class of 2023, we stand here today tall and proud, full-fledged and unique oak trees. Although it may seem like we just met yesterday, our time at Elsmith City has quickly come to an end. So now is the moment for us to go forth and plant our own acorns. We carry with us the lessons we've learned and the memories we've made. Let's grow the kind of trees that Elsmith City would be proud of. Let us carry the spirit of Elsmith City with us always, spreading our roots and planting our own acorns wherever we go. Thank you all for being part of this journey with me, and congratulations, Class of 2023. Since we close the evening, I have a few remarks for you, actually seven to be exact. First, 
with the ambassadors who distributed programs this evening please stand. They represent the Louisiana School Ambassadors from the classes of 2024 and 2025. Would you please stand? <laughs> Nearly a decade ago, the Louisiana School Alumni Association began a new tradition to annually honor Louisiana school graduates whose parents were also graduates of the school. The class of 23 includes 10 of these legacy graduates. At the conclusion of this program, we'll invite them and their parents to the stage where the parents will present to the students a legacy coin coin that symbolizes their shared experience as a graduate of the Louisiana School. You may wonder why other awards were not handed out this evening. The Louisiana School for Math, Science, and the Arts would love to have all students, family, and friends in attendance for every award that we present. And that's what happened for the first annual Senior Recognition Ceremony some 39 years ago. We were not any of those in attendance, but we were told it started at 7.30 p.m. and ended at 12.30 a.m. The price we pay for excellence. Well, we schedule several awards programs and community meetings and banquets. So, other awards and winners of competitions received by the seniors are listed in your program. We hope we've not missed anyone and apologize if we have. As the first senior recognition program showed us, even the length of a written program prohibits us from recognizing everyone who has placed or won many very competition competitions in which you have been involved. Third, excellence medallion recipients. Remember your medallions will be distributed tomorrow morning at rehearsal. Make sure you wear them to graduation. Fourth, students who are singing, speaking, or carrying the gondolons at graduation should be at Brayton Coliseum no later than 8.45 a.m for a brief rehearsal. All other students, faculty, and staff must be seated in Prather by 8.55 a.m. so that we can begin rehearsal promptly at 9 o'clock. Fifth, to all, please be mindful that the commencement ceremony begins at 2 o'clock tomorrow, not 2.15, not 1.45, but 2 o'clock. Prather Coliseum does not open its doors until 12.30 p.m. So be aware that there is a drop-off loop just off of Jefferson Street for those who need a shorter walk to their seat in the Coliseum. I speak for all of the faculty, staff, and administration of the Louisiana School when I offer our thanks to all of you, our parents, who have shared their children with us. We're indeed fortunate to have not only outstanding seniors, but also outstanding senior parents. And finally, we have two photos we need to take up here on the stage so that we can keep everyone off the stage so that we can bring our associate degree recipients uh, first up to the stage to have their picture taken, and then we have a second of our legacy graduates. If you would allow them on the stage first to get their pictures taken, we would appreciate it. And with that said, I thank you for coming. Remember, we have a party over at the high school building that's pizza and basically food for our graduates and their friends. So please stop by there on your way home. But most of all, have a safe evening and drive safely.